explosive Cornhusker ground attack. High back Mike Rozier scored three touchdowns last week in an incredible 84-13 win over Minnesota. Wingback Irving Pryor scored three more, including catches of 68 and 70 yards. Join us as the UCLA Bruins take on number one. Hello, everybody. I'm Ray Scott. By my side is Joe Butita. The knowledgeable football people that I've chatted with, Joe, insist that if Nebraska has a weakness, it might be in their pass defense. Yeah, I didn't know they had a weakness uh, <laughs> 84 points a week ago. I think you're right. Uh, the UCLA air attack uh, is the eighth best in the country right now. Rick Neuheisel doing as good or better than Tom Ramsey did a year ago at this time. They've got those flying flankers, and if the, uh, the cornerbacks and the safeties, uh, they're not the gambling type. If they play them too softly, those young kids are going to run right by them. And Neuheisel is good enough to throw the ball long, short, and can throw the, the out pattern. Uh, I think maybe through the air is the way they may start to go. Very well. We're delighted you're with us. And we'll be back with the opening kickoff right after these messages. Round of a literal sea of red. The Bruins of UCLA challenge just about everyone's choice as the number one team in the country, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, in absolutely ideal football weather, Joe. Except for the wind. The wind may be a factor. It's blowing between 18 and 25 miles an hour, and uh, we'll have to see what kind of effect that has on the Bruin passing attack, which is rated number eight in the country. Only time will tell. Several moments ago, we were attempting to read the signals of referee Verl Sorgan after the coin toss and it appeared that Nebraska had won the toss and instead of electing as most teams do to receive the ball at the start of the game indicated that they had declined receiving the ball. So in a moment we'll see as to whether they will receive or kick off. Incidentally Bob Placeris is the umpire Bob Zelinka the headlinesman Kent Houck the line judge. Bill Fetty the field judge Michael Borgard the side judge and Artie Falk is the back judge. This game will be played on artificial turf and I've already misread the referee signal because Nebraska's in receiving position Joe. Well there's a rule in college football this year where you can if you win the toss you can decline the football and make the other team uh, choose which it would like to do either receive or kick off to begin the ball game so that we may see the. Uh, the Cornhuskers now will get the ball in the first half, so the Bruins obviously will get it to start off the second half. And I would think if I had the offense of the Cornhuskers, I'd want the ball as quickly as possible, too. A couple of real flyers will be back for Ken Potter's kickoff. Their outstanding wing back, Irving Fryer, one of the top receivers in the nation and a pretty good runner. And Jeff Smith who is listed as a number two eye back as he's referred to in Cornhusker terminology. They're back. 27 is Fryer. 28 is Jeff Smith. And this yet another sellout crowd of 76,000 plus poised and ready to roar as the Bruins prepare to kick off to the Nebraska Cornhuskers. So wherever you are, glad you're with us. And here's the kick. It's a good one. End zone. End line. No return. Now, here are some numbers for you to watch for if you have not seen Nebraska before the quarterback number 12 Turner Gill an exceedingly skilled young man running or passing or directing the attack number 30 Mike Rozier the eye back or tailback Mark Shaleen number 25 the fullback Fryer number 27 will line up wide to one side or the other they have split out Scott Kimball number 88 and there's Turner Gill from the Nebraska 20 first and 10. Fryer in motion. This is Rozier. And he gets almost five yards and a flag is down. Now I don't know whether that Bruin defensive lineman got across the line and encroached or not Joe. It seemed like the nose guard and the center for Nebraska made contact before the snap of the ball. Uh, as you say, they might have fallen into each other, and it's going to be offsides on UCLA. So Turner Gill has the choice here, and I would have to believe that he'll accept the penalty because it'll then be first and five. Both teams very anxious for this game, Ray. UCLA has yet to win a ball game after playing well or fairly well for two weeks. 
And then on the other hand, Nebraska has been criticized in that they people are saying that they haven't yet been tested. So they want to prove that they can be the pretty good UCLA team. So both teams anxious to get this one on. Ricky Simmons, number seven, and Scott Kimball, number 88, are the messengers for Coach Tom Osborne. Simmons just brought, on in the, brought in the play on first and five, and this is Shaleen getting about three yards. It'll bring up a second down, two. I doubt that you could find a better offensive line in the country than that of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Well, and the, the key, maybe, uh, the anchor to that line, right guard Dean Steinkuhler, number 71, 6'3", and 270, as good a technician as Dave Remington, who graduated last year, and there's that line right now. Pretty good one. Second and two, Nebraska from their own 28-yard line. Rozier, here he goes. Right across the 45-yard line. And I want you to notice one thing about number 30, Mike Rozier. The way he will use his forearm. Here it is now, handoff to Rozier. He follows number 72, Scott Raridan, through the line. Look at him cut, though. He just glides, sets a foot, and cuts. That's right. He just tries to fend the, the tackler off. Oh, another big gain. Boy, he's been used to big gains. He's averaging 9.2 yards a carry this year. There goes Rozier again. Breaks a tackle. And he has another first down. He is a punishing runner. Not only is he quick, not only is he big, but he's a punishing runner physically, and he has a first down for Nebraska up the UCLA 41-yard line. Nothing really fancy here. No option involved at all. Doug West misses a tackle, allows Rozier, who was 5'11 and 2'10, to get another first down. So he's picked up two big gains in two carries. Fryer goes left, working against Ron Pitts. Gill still has it. Broke a tackle, fumbled, recovered by Nebraska inside the UCLA. No, they say UCLA. I thought the Nebraska player, let's see who it was, was on that ball. That was number 20. Number 78, Chris Block comes up with it. Here's the option, the first option play we've seen today. Doug West, the linebacker, misses another tackle, a second in a row. Donnie Rogers knocks the ball loose. Nobody sees it for a while. And then Chris Block, the nose guard, comes up and just strips the ball away from number 28. That was Jeff Smith who had checked in for one down as the eye back. So the Bruins have it on the first turnover of the game at their own 29-yard line. Rick Neuheisel, number 10, the senior quarterback, the running backs are Cephas 46, and it is Cephas with the ball. Makes a good move and winds up with a good gain out around the 30-yard line. And let's credit the right tackle, Duval Love, number 67, for the block that sprung him. This is a planned play, all this by design. Love, 6'3", and 268 pounds, a two-year veteran. And there's the, the backfield and the offensive line now for UCLA. Tennell, number 23, replaces Cephas at fullback. Nelson is the other running back, and this is Nelson. No gain. The defensive charge led by Mark Dom, who has been playing exceedingly well as a linebacker for the Cornhuskers. There are two outside, there are two linebackers. They run a 5-2 type of formation. There's the defensive line. But Mark Dom, 51, Mike Knox, number 44, the two linebackers are almost as good as they've ever had here. Third down, nine, UCLA 30. Sherrard was waved out a bit to the right by Neuheisel. Good protection. He wanted to hit Kevin Nelson coming out of the backfield, but he got tangled up with the defender, and it is fourth down. Well, that answers some of the questions, at least partially, this big crowd, wondering if the Cornhusker defense could stop the UCLA air attack. Right now they have, and here's a first. Steve Bono will be doing the punting, his first since high school days. Smith and Fryer back to accept the punt for Nebraska. We have no score from Lincoln, Nebraska. This is Fryer. Across the 30 to the Nebraska 33-yard line. Irving Fryer. Got a good lead block. Valley, New Jersey. Got a good lead block from Neil Harris. Sprung him for a little bit of yard. 
The Cornhuskers have it first and 10 at their own 33, their second possession. So now Turner Gill and company back in action. Shaleen, 25, the fullback. Rozier, 30, the eye back, although this time he's not lined up in the eye formation. Shaleen, short yardage to the 36-yard line. Mark Shaleen, a senior running back out of Waterloo, Nebraska. He's averaging 11.2 yards a carry as well. In fact, you look down there, rushing statistics and about six or seven of these fellas are almost in double figures it's truly been so far this season an awesome offensive machine ricky simmons number seven is out to the left working against ron pitts ucla shifting the defense around rosier and he just a lunge across the 40 to set up a third down and two and a half No score from Lincoln, Nebraska. We have played about three and a half minutes. And Coach Tom Osborne, Dr. Tom, if you prefer, directing the Cornhuskers and hopeful of his 100th coaching victory as a head coach. Third and two and a half. Rozier, he has the first down at the 46-yard line of Nebraska. Gee, he gets outside so quickly. What they'll try and do is stretch your defense, try and get to the perimeter with their option-type offense, and then if Rozier can get outside, you see what he does. He's so quick, makes such good cuts, and of course, he's being supported by a pretty big offensive line, which averages around 263 pounds. New tight end, number 80, Todd Freen, has replaced Ingebrigtsen. This is a first and 10 play. Gill, for the first time, this is Fryer. One of the great receivers in college football, Mount Holly, New Jersey's Irving Fryer. And it's another Nebraska first down. This at the Bruin 39-yard line. Turner Gill with an exceptional arm. He's very underrated as a passer. He's a shortstop on the football, on the baseball team here. Watch this cut by Fryer on Lupe Sanchez. My goodness, he leaves him lying there without even making contact. Joe Gasser had to make the tackle, but it's a Nebraska first down at the UCLA 38-yard line. Here's Fryer as a runner, but excellent holding of his position by linebacker Lee Knowles. He didn't go with the flow, and as a result, the gain is only about a yard, and that is an accomplishment against this Nebraska offense this season. Well, I'll say Bill Reese, uh, one of the UCLA assistant coaches actually in charge of recruiting, scouted Nebraska last week, and Terry Donahue says, how did they do it? How did they score 84 points? And Reese says, very quickly. <laughs> Shane Swanson, another wide receiver, is out wide to the right. The only setback is Shaleen. That's Swanson in motion. Whoop, Gill down. In this plane, I don't know whether he caught his feet on uh, perhaps his center or his guard. Do you think that happened, Joe? That's what it looked like. It looked like he caught a toe on the, uh, on the back of the center's heel. So a loss on the play. Back to the UCLA 40. Now Fryer comes in. Kimball comes in. Let's see if Jeff Smith uh, stays in at eye back, number 28. It's a very different assignment for the UCLA defense this week because of the option and because of the three great skilled people in the backfield. They have so many things to watch and so much to be aware of. Smith is the eye back. Turner Gill with a lot of time. He's a fine runner. He does not get the first down. He's at the 31-yard line. It will be fourth and approximately three and Gene Newburn and Doug West teamed up to make the tackle, and Rozier checks back in. Now this is confidence in the offense. Three yards for a first down, not even a hint that they're going to kick, go for three points. Well, they're averaging 9.1 yards in offensive play, and this early in the ball game, why not go for it? Nebraska right now elects to ask for a timeout. With 8.57 left to play in the first quarter. There is no score, and we'll be back after this. Wide receiver, fourth and three, Nebraska, 31-yard line of UCLA. Gill keeps, and he has the first down. Despite a good defensive play by Gene Newburn, the Lexington, Massachusetts senior linebacker, it is a first down. 
So the Cornhuskers have had two possessions, Joe, and have moved the ball extremely well both times. Oh, yeah. I, I have heard so much about this club and, of course, was very anxious to get here and see how a team can score 84 points against another Division I team. Now I know. Ricky Simmons, number seven, wide to the left. Fryer comes in motion right. Rozier. Very short game, run out of bounds around the 25-yard line, and Rozier is limited to about two yards. That time, the left cornerback, Lupe Sanchez, read the pitch and read the run around the end, came up to fill, and it was Lupe Sanchez, number 21, who forced the action and got Rozier to the sideline as you look at Tom Osborne. Here's another look at it, just a straight pitch, nothing fancy, but Stein Cooler, look at that block by number 71, but here comes Sanchez and Rogers to force him out of bounds. Second down, eight, and Fryer again is the man in motion. He'll throws, whoa. A little bit off target and behind Fryer, and as a result, it will be third and long. Tell you what, if Ronnie Pitts, number 47, keeps his head up and catches that football off the tip, he's gone, and UCLA is on the scoreboard. Lee Knowles comes off limping, and Mike Mahan, number 98, replaces him. Well, they can't afford to lose another linebacker. The Bruins are already without three of their linebackers today. Steve Jarecki, Tommy Taylor, a starter, and Steve Butler. So they can't afford to lose another backer. Third down and eight for a first down. The ball at the UCLA 25-yard line. No score, midway first quarter. That's Swanson in motion. And here comes Rozier, and a block. Penalty flag. A flag down. Rozier went into the end zone, but a flag is down behind the play. It was thrown just about the time Rozier reached the line of scrimmage. Number 71. Holding. Dean Steinkohler may be the guilty party as you look from our high camera. Watch how it opens up and look how they stretch the defense. And look at the cut by Rozier on Donnie Rogers, who was an All-American candidate at free safety. So that penalty nullifies the run for an apparent touchdown. Here's our referee. Well, unfortunately, we can't hear him very well. Verl Sorgan, the referee. And that 10-yard penalty will now bring up a third down at about 17 with the ball 43 yards so far on five carries for Rozier. Jeff Smith is the eye back. Number 28, fumble. Is it still alive? It is. UCLA has the second Nebraska turnover. Jeff Chafer, number 44, comes up with the football. He's playing today on the defensive line in place of Dave Randall. Just a, a bobbled snap. Gerner, or Turner tried to do too much with the football too early. And there you see Chafin, 44, jump on it. The second turnover the Bruins have come up with. New Heisel, the quarterback. Tennell, number 23, the fullback. Nelson is the deep back on the eye, number three. Long count by Ricky. Nelson, good hole, but somebody, number 75, Bob Stuckey, a junior tackle from Lexington, Kentucky, got an or Lexington, Nebraska got an arm out, and that prevented, a, I think, a, what it might have been a substantial game. Pretty good hole there for Kevin Nelson. Danny Andrews, the Bruins' top ground gainer, is in uniform but may not play today. He suffered a, an injury to his head last week, and uh, he's very doubtful for this afternoon. One setback and two tight end. Nelson is the only running back on second down, six. New Heisel looking. Big Bergman. And the initial first down of the game by the Bruins takes them down to the Nebraska 41-yard line where linebacker Mike Knox will make the tackle. Here's Rick again. Throws the ball well. Bergman gets himself open despite the coverage. He beats one man, then Neil Harris and Mike McCashlin, the monster man, double team him for the tackle, but the first down for the Bruins. Sherrard left, Mike Young right. The fullback is back in the game. It's Tunnell. Nelson, good hole. And a gain down to the 35 yard line. An excellent gain of about six and a half yards where linebacker Mike Dom. Ray, I think from a psychological standpoint, the fact that the Bruins have picked up a couple of turnovers and have not yet been scored upon, I think right now the Bruins are feeling pretty good about themselves. Durrell is wide right, Sherrard wide left. Second down, a little more than three for a first down. There's Nelson. 
and he appears to be about a yard shy of a first down at the Nebraska 33. No score. 6.50 left to play in the first quarter. Nebraska moved the ball very well on its two possessions, but gave it up twice on turnovers. That time, the monster man, Mike McCashlin, was on a blitz, an outside blitz, and he missed the tackle on Nelson in the backfield. That allowed Kevin to get some pretty good yardage. So third and short right now. Third and about one, two tight ends. Howell is also in. That's Howell in motion. Nelson to the outside, got a good block. And he gets a first down at the 30-yard line. And an excellent play by Brett Clark, the free safety, or he'd have really gone for big distance. Yeah, were it not for number 10, Brett Clark, a 6'2", 200-pound junior, Nelson would have been able to turn the corner and start down the sideline. But as you watch it here, they play rather slow and developing. Kevin cuts in, then starts outside, and here comes McCashlin. And that ends the play, but Kevin's strong enough to pull himself for the first down. So it's a first down for the Bruins at the Nebraska 30. 6-10 left to play, first quarter, no score. New Heisel, bootlegging, looking. This is Cephas. And he gets it to the 27-yard line on a good bit of ad-libbing by New Heisel getting out of the clutches of defensive end Bill Weber. That's an excellent way to put it, Ray, ad-libbing. This is not the way the play is supposed to go, but it ends up pretty good. Cephas just hanging around. He ends up as the safety valve on that play and picks up maybe three yards. Second down, seven Bruins, 27-yard line of Nebraska. Mike Young is out to the left. Good hole. Nelson gets down to the 23-yard line and a key third and three coming up as linebacker Mark Dom and nose tackle Mike Trenner make the stop for Nebraska. Once again, we point to that left side of the offensive line of UCLA, Duval Love, number 67, and Mike Hartmeyer, number 63, doing a fine job and opened up the hole that time. So third down, short yardage now. Now they're taking Nelson out. So the only setback is Cephas, and New Eyes were recognizing they were about to be penalized for taking too much time, asks for a timeout. It will be third and three when play resumes. This is a scoreless battle. And Rizzo has consulted with Terry Donahue and staff, a third down and three for UCLA at the 23-yard line of Nebraska. And I know that a lot of people watching this game are surprised to see that score of nothing-nothing fairly late in the first quarter. Now both Bergman, Bergman was in motion, New Heisel. This is Bergman at a first down at the 13-yard line. Now both Howell and Bergman are in the game, two tight ends. It looked for a while there like they were gonna have two men in motion. They're a tandem, that's right. Here comes New Heisel, who is now four of five for almost 30 yards in the ball game. Nice catch by Bergman, guns out of bounds, and it's a first down for the Bruins at the 13. Mike Young is to the right, Sherrard is to the left. This is Cephas. Oh, what a cut and a good hole, and he's down to the one-yard line. And I think it is safe to say right now, and a flag down behind where the tackle was made, and Cephas made a beautiful cut. Now it's a trap play, number 63 on that offensive line, Mike Hartmeyer, a key block, and Cephas running hard, and there's the piling on penalty right there. So it's going to be against the Cornhuskers. And I honestly think, as one who was here at Nebraska all of last year, that this 76,000-plus is stunned right now here at Memorial Stadium. They don't know what to say. I tell you what, Nebraska has scored 56 points in the first quarters of games thus far. They're 3-0. and Right now, UCLA is on the brink of scoring first in the first quarter. Tunnell and Cephas are both in the game. They're both listed as fullbacks. Howell in motion. This is Cephas, and he has a touchdown. And the UCLA Bruins capitalizing on a turnover and moving the ball extremely well with Neuheisel passing very well. Nelson and Cephas running with just a, a reckless abandon, and the Bruins are on the board first. For some reason, the offensive line is really up for this ball game today. Their blocking schemes and their blocking techniques have been just about perfect. Here they provide a nice barrier. They're hurdled by Cephas, and the offensive lineman came off high, high step in that time. John Lee, out of a new Heisel hold, will try for point number seven. And the point.
point after is good. And before this literally stunned crowd, the Bruins lead Nebraska seven to nothing. Ah, here's a reminder, folks. Westwood will be the place to be next spring. UCLA will host six NCAA championship events. Now, ticket information will be available in November. So we would advise and suggest that you plan on being a part of this true celebration of college sports. Ray, we'll get a pretty good idea if the enthusiasm of the Bruin offense is now contagious and is picked up by the Bruin defense. The Bruin defense has been bent twice, but they have not yet been scored upon. They caused two fumbles, recovered them both, turned the last one into a touchdown. So let's see the, what's happening. It's an interesting psychological mystery right now, and these 76,000 fans really don't know what to say or what to do at the moment. I don't think they've been behind this year yet. Ken Potter will be kicking off in a moment. At the start of the game, he kicked off deep enough that there was no return, and that, from a UCLA point of view, is very, very important because Fryer and Smith, the two return men, they're just dynamite. Most coaches like to talk about the three facets of a football game, offense, defense, and the kicking game, and they agree that if you can win two of the three, you'll probably win the football game. Right now, the Bruins are ahead in two aspects of the game, but we have such a long way to go. We do indeed. In fact, we have four minutes and 39 seconds remaining of the first quarter. Now, Joe mentioned just before the opening kickoff that the wind today conceivably could have something to do with the game. It's listed as gusting up to around 25 miles an hour. This crowd getting ready to let out a roar. There'll be no return of this one. My goodness, this might be in the stands. It is a souvenir. Whew. How about that one? So it'll be the Nebraska Cornhuskers with this high-powered offense starting from the Cornhusker 20. Turner Gill, the quarterback. Either Mike Rozier, number 30, or Jeff Smith, number 28, the eye back. Mark Shaleen, number 25, probably the fullback. Scott Kimball or Ricky Simmons will be the split end. Irving Fryer or Shane Swanson will be the wing back. Out to the right is Fryer. Very short game this time. Jeff Smith is a junior running back out of Wichita, Kansas. And now instead of Shaleen at fullback, we have Tom Rathman, a sophomore from Grand Island, Nebraska, number 26. There's nothing wrong with Rozier. He's on the sideline talking with Coach Osborne. Second down, seven. Turner Gill. This is Smith. Short of a first down by a yard. I think it might have been Donnie Rogers came up to make that. Yep, Don Rogers came up and made a good hit, but Nebraska's in a third and one at the Cornhusker 29. Rogers is operating this week with a sore groin and a sore shoulder. He got the groin in Georgia, injured the sh shoulder against Arizona State last week, but there's no way he's going to miss this ball game. Rozier is back at eye back, number 30. Rathman stays in at fullback. Rozier, he has a first down. As he is brought down by Gene Newberg. Number 81, but it's a first down, Nebraska. As I watch this Nebraska team, Joe, I, I get the idea that it's important for every team, of course, but particularly Nebraska being as explosive as they are to try and limit them to short yardage on first down. Not let them get into that second and two and second and one. Yeah, second and two, they can play with you a little bit for a down and waste one and then explode on third down if they don't make it. UCLA leading 7 0 late first quarter. Rozier. You know what it looks like the defense of UCLA is doing now? The first couple of series of downs for Nebraska, the UCLA defense appeared to be over committing and allowing Rozier some big holes. Now it looks like the defense is just holding account, reading what Rozier does, and then closing in on him. Now, by that time, Rozier left the field limping. He's replaced by Smith. Mike Mahan made a good tackle on that last play. This is Jeff Smith trying to get to the outside. Fights his way out to around the 40-yard line, where it will be third down and two and a half. 
That was great individual effort got Smith the last two or three yards. It really was. And if you watch, just keep an eye on the white shirts for the next couple of plays. They're kind of trying to string the plays out and not getting into the offensive backfield as quickly as they were earlier in the first quarter. So they're reading the play and then closing in. They're kind of bending, but not too far. And when they see where the running back's going, then they try to close in. Third down, two and a half for a first down. Nebraska 40. Shaleen back at fullback, number 25. Turner Gill. And an open field tackle by Donnie Rogers, or that would have gone for a big game. As it is, it's another Nebraska first down. Gill runs that play so very well. Well, Joe Gasser is a sophomore. As you look at the line batter, backers getting sealed off by some pretty good blocks. That's Gene Newborn getting hit twice. But watch this fake by Gill. He put Gasser in the freezer and allowed number 28, Jeff Smith, just to roam free back there. And then he turned up field for some good yardage. First and 10, Nebraska at the Cornhusker 46. Jeff Smith to the outside. Gets a very short game. Thanks to a good play by Lee Knowles, who was out. Now, or was that Mark Whalen? Mark Whalen, Mark I Whalen. believe. Yeah. Number 95. 95, not 85. Mark, 6'5 and 235. He, too, just a sophomore with a couple of years of experience. Redshirted one year. Gain of two, second down, eight. Nebraska 49 yard line. Jeff Smith to the outside, a good move. And he has a first down at the UCLA 41 yard line. Well, I'm telling you, he had Mark Whalen and Jeff Smith were helmet to helmet. Watch number 95 on the right. Helmet to helmet right there, and then he cuts outside and picks up yardage. The ability to cut that quickly and run to the outside is what makes them so, so explosive. 1 11 left to play first quarter. UCLA 7 to nothing. Out to the right is Ricky Simmons. Fryer is off to the left. Rozier is back in the game, and the Bruins decide they want to talk things over. Now, I think this is their second time out here in the first half. Gene Mewborn, number 81, had to come off the field. He's being traded by the, the UCLA trainers, and he's on the bench right now. That's the reason for the time. First and 10, Nebraska, 40-yard line of the Bruins. Shaleen. Fumble. Fumble. Turnover again. The Bruins have their third. Nebraska fumble here in the first quarter. Donnie Rogers comes up with a loose football. And so far in this game, it's uh, Nebraska stopping themselves. That'll kill you every time. There's no reason to give it to the other team. And there's Donnie Rogers who recovered the fumble, takes a blow. And now the Bruin offense is back on the field. Nobody expected this. Tunnell will be the fullback, number 23. Nelson is the deep back, and 76,000 people trying to encourage their Cornhuskers who trail UCLA 7 to nothing. This is Nelson. And the cutback this time doesn't work. Holding his ground was Mark Dom, who has played so extremely well for Nebraska so far this season. Gain of two yards for Kevin Nelson. Second down eight. We're down to the final seconds of the first quarter. The Bruins lead. Wide to the left is Durrell. To the right, Sherrard. Good protection. Cephas breaking a tackle. He's at the Nebraska 40, 35. He fights his way to the 431 yard line. What a super effort by Newark, Delaware's Frank Cephas. And there's a couple of things to consider on this play. First of all, the time allowed Neuheisel. Look at the blocking by the offensive line. They're inspired. Then he hits the safety valve, Cephas, and then it's all individual effort from here. Cephas, not the niftiest of runners. He's a power runner, but he gets the job done. It takes four red shirts to get him out of bounds after going 38 yards. That stopped the clock with four seconds left in the first quarter. First and 10, UCLA, Nebraska 31-yard line. Nelson, great cutback. Now, that reminded me of the cutback for the two-pointer that tied Arizona State last week, and that's the gun right now. 
the end of the first quarter from Lincoln Nebraska the score get ready for this UCLA 7 Nebraska nothing we'll be back after this. to this game are granted by the Regents of the University of California to Metro Communications Incorporated any rebroadcast or other use of this game without written consent is prohibited the announcers on this broadcast have been selected by Metro Communications Incorporated in consultation with the University of California Los Angeles Second down for the Bruins at the Nebraska 25-yard line. Tunnell and Nelson are the setbacks. Sherrard to the right. Tunnell with a big hole and a first down at the 20-yard line of Nebraska. And this offensive line of Duval Love, Mike Hartmeyer, Dave Barron, Jim McCullough, and Scott Gordon, I just can't say enough with it. If you watch just the line charge, you folks at home, watch the white push the red off the line. That's basic power football. Also keep in mind that this is the first time this year the Bruins are playing a defense that does not gamble. In other words, they'll give you about a count. They'll try and read what you're going to do, but by that time, the offensive line is on them. New wide receivers. This is Cephas. And he just won't be denied. He has a first and goal inside the five-yard line. Take a look at now here. Watch the white. Just take care of the red. The red reading. They're not gambling. And there goes Cephas right through the line. He makes a cut right here to the inside. Cross steps and picks up another five or six yards for the first down. That's and just one good big boss. And that play was provided by Chris Yellich, who's in at right guard. And he's it's, been injured. It's I said first and goal at the five. It's it's first and goal just inside the ten yard line. Nelson. Picking his way to about the six or seven yard line. Where he's met by, among others, Mike Knox, number 44. Nebraska uses what could basically, basically be called a 5 2 defense. David Clinton now comes in and replaces Howell, who was in as a second tight end. Clinton, number 19. Second down, just inside the Nebraska 7. Good hole for Nelson. Gets it inside the five where it will be third down. I think I'd better just keep repeating the score in case people say, oh, come on. Seven nothing UCLA. <laughs> it is surprising, we have to admit. I mean, Terry Donahue said, how are you going to approach? How are you going to coach the team to face Nebraska? And he says, I don't know. I've never prepared for a team that scored 84 points just a week ago. Now we have Bolin. Bergman and Powell, three tight ends. Third down, five-yard line of Nebraska. Powell in motion. Neuheisel still has the ball. He is throwing it away. There was big pressure by a blitzing linebacker. Nebraska elected to come with Mark Dom, number 51, as well as Mike Keeler, a defensive tackle, and now it is fourth down. Did I did not see the penalty flag, but it is apparently against UCLA. Here's the signal. Probably holding because this play took so long in developing. Illegal use of hands. So now, I am assuming that Nebraska will elect to take the play to bring up a fourth down, but it appears that the penalty is going to be accepted. I, I am surprised at this. I am too. Down so deep in their own territory. Realizing that UCLA has an outstanding kicker in John Lee. Well, we'll see what happens. I see now what it is. It was an offensive interference. That involves a loss, loss of down. down. Right. So now, out of a new Heisel hold. Against John the wind. Lee into the wind. Will be attempting a 37-yard field goal. He has been successful on three of four. It has the distance. It is good. So the Bruins are on the board twice. With the score, UCLA 10. The shot Cornhuskers nothing. We'll be back after this. Potter now will be kicking off into the wind. His two kickoffs with the wind behind him were not returnable. 
but Smith and Fryer are poised inside the Nebraska five. Ray, this is the first time this year that UCLA has led in a football game. They never led at Georgia. They never led at Arizona State or against Arizona State. And now they come in to play the number one rated Cornhuskers, and they're up 10 to nothing. So they're feeling their Wheaties right now. And the Cornhuskers, first time they've trailed all season long. We're very early in the second quarter. The clock shows 12 minutes and 52 seconds remaining in the first half. Wind gusting at times up to 25 miles an hour. Three Nebraska turnovers, every one recovered by the Bruins. Good kick. This is Jeff Smith. He's going to run it out. He's at the 10, 15, and down at the 21 yard line. Now, will we see Rozier? Will we see Smith at tailback? We know one thing, we'll see Turner Gill at quarterback. Earlier in the week, there was a lot of apprehension here in Cornhusker country. Turner Gill had back spasms. He's had back spasms uh, the last couple of years, and why they allow him to lift weights during the season, I'll never know, but that's up to Coach Osborne. Shaleen the fullback, Rozier is the eye back. Fryer in motion. Rozier, uh oh, here comes Fryer trying to get outside. And he is hemmed in. That was, there was beautiful team defense, mainly because defenders stayed home. Exactly. They read the play. They've also been coached that Nebraska probably has more of these trick plays than any other college team in the country. So they've been looking out for one. And now down 10 to nothing, it's about time to try something and really try and fool the Bruins, but they didn't fool them at all. One yard gain that time. Chris Block and Neil Delacono made the tackle. Gain of a yard, second down nine at the 22 of Nebraska. Goes here. And he may have another Nebraska first down. This one at the Cornhusker 31 and a half yard line where Joe Gasser from his strong safety spot made the tackle. Watch it. Here comes Rozier reading what the defense does, what it will give him. And there's a great block by Irving Fryer on Gasser, but little Joe able to get an ankle and trip him up. Measurement for the down, I thought he had it. Mike Rozier. So Tom now, Osborne said here a few days ago that in his years here at Nebraska's head coach, definitely the finest running back he has coached, and that covers a lot of great running well, backs. Well, I'll say. <laughs> it sure does. There he is, number 30. A Heisman candidate, All-American from last year, the all-time Nebraska rusher. It is a Nebraska first down at the Cornhusker 31 and a half yard line. 12 minutes remaining in the first half. Rathman, number 26, is now the fullback. Rathman, quick handoff. He gets about four and a half yards across the 35. Tony Phillips, sophomore linebacker out of Santa Monica, made the tackle. Now Ricky Simmons, a wide receiver, checks in. Irving Fryer, the wingback, number 27, check into the Nebraska lineup. Second down and about six for a first down. Fryer out to the right, working against Lupe Sanchez. Simmons to the left, opposed by Ron Pitts. Quick pass. This is Fryer. Boy, he took quite a hit from Sanchez. Close for first down. He's one-on-one -on -one with him. That's an awful lonesome spot to be on Fryer. It really is. And think of the pressure on Sanchez. Nobody out there to help him. If he misses the tackle or slides off, Gasser can't get Fryer. There's no way. He's gone. Third and less than one for a first down at the Nebraska 41-yard line. The only wide receiver out to the left is Scott Kimball. And Gill keeps for the first down. Listen to these averages by their runners. Turner Gill, the quarterback, has averaged 8.7 yards a pass. Rozier, as Joe pointed out, 9.2. Shaleen, 11.2. Fryer, 15.4. It's scary, Joe. Maybe the Nebraska critics are right. Maybe they haven't played anybody this year yet. They're 3-0, oh, but they're being tested right now. At the 42 of Nebraska, first and 10. Rozier. To the 50. Bruising 
Mike Brazier. Keep an eye on the pulling guard, number 67, Greg Orton. There's the block that springs him on Lupe Sanchez, a very good tackler, and he's tripped up by his own man. He tripped up over number 66, John Sherlock, or he might have been gone for longer yardage. Gain of eight, second down two at the 50. Swanson and Simmons are wide left. But there goes Rozier. And his knee hit before he got the first down. He got only a yard. It'll be third and one. Good pressure that time by UCLA's number 44, Jeff Chafin. 6'3 and 250 pounds. He's a senior. But he forced Rozier outside and to kind of crow hop a step. And that allowed the other tacklers to come up and make the stop. Scott Kimball brings in the play. And will now go way out to the wide side, the left, working against Pitts. It is third and one at the UCLA 49. First down for Shalene. You just get the feeling so far that the only thing that can stop their running attack is what it stopped it so far. Turnovers. That's right. Well, the UCLA defense has created the turnovers. They've turned the ball over to the offense, and the offense has produced. And right now it's 10 zip UCLA. Wide left, Ricky Simmons. Fryer is a wing back right. Here comes Fryer. A good hit there by Joe Gasser, or that could have gone for big yardage because Fryer, the intended receiver, who is down. Had a blocker out there. Shane Swanson was out there to block for him. But Fryer's up. That's They're good. Calling that a complete pass. So apparently oh. the ball never hit the, gr the ground. Loss of yard. It's lost about a yard on that play, Ray. Second down, 11, as Tom Osborne looks on from across the way. Kimball to the right. Turner Gill running the option. Breaking tackles. First down. Loose football. The ball is ruled dead at the 17-yard line of UCLA. Oh, that's a big break for Nebraska. Boy, another loose football. First but. things first, watch number 95 in the UCLA white. Mark Whalen had a shot at Gill, and he got blocked out by Neil Delacono, his own man. Here's the fumble. Mike Rozier picks it up. And he runs backwards faster than most guys run frontward. Watch this. There he goes. He's off to the races backwards. Now he was ruled down at the 17-yard line of UCLA with eight minutes left to play in the first half and UCLA leading 10 to nothing. But the crowd comes alive at Memorial Stadium. Jeff Smith down to the 11-yard line before he is ridden down by Gene Newborn. They're running over Dean Steincooler's hole. That shouldn't come as a surprise. Number 71, 6'3", and 270 pounds, and we have an injured Bruin on the field. I believe it is... Uh, Neil Delacono. Oh, we have Mike... Uh, Mike Mahan has, has his banged-up shoulder. Neil Delacono comes up limping. That's two more Bruin linebackers who are injured, and Delacono now wants to stay in the game. I'm not sure about Mayhem, though. He looks like he may have to come out. Second down and four. 12-yard line of UCLA. Shaleen breaks tackles. Touchdown to Boston. Mark Shaleen. He broke the tackles of Lindy Sanchez and Neil Delacono, two of the best tacklers on this UCLA ball club. And there he goes, high step of the mid for six points. So now it's Nebraska on the board with 7.27 to play in the first half. And Dave Schneider will try for Nebraska's seventh point with the balloons in full flight. All sorts of balloons released as point number seven for Nebraska goes on the board. And we have a whale of a football game. We have a barn burner here at Lincoln, Nebraska, and we'd like to remind you that we'd like to have you join us on most of these stations next week. The Bruins return to the Rose Bowl to play host to the passing Cougars of Brigham Young University. Stay with us all season long as Metro Sports brings you all the pageantry and excitement of UCLA football.
Scott Livingston will kick off. Durrell and Nelson are deep to receive. Midway second quarter. With the following wind, no return. So now let's see whether the UCLA offense, oh, oh there goes a belated flag. Right at that instant it went flying. be at the UCLA 20. The ball is so after Apparently, in the opinion of the officials, after they had signaled touchback, a foul occurred, hence the term dead ball foul. So now, Rick Neuheiser will try and get the Bruins going, not from the 20, but from the 10-yard line of UCLA. Sherrard to the left, Mike Young to the right. Rick Neuheisel is saying, hey, we can't hear our signals. Let's see if the officials agree. I think Rick might have done the wrong thing. That'll just make him get louder. Now, referee Burl Sorgan. He might have opened up a can of worms, Rick Neuheisel, with that one. There's no way the crowd's going to be quiet. Although the officials can yes. talk to the crowd and ask them to please allow the ball game to continue. I remember a couple of years ago at Madison, Wisconsin, the Wisconsin fans were down on their own team. And they made so much noise against their own team that they were penalized. All right. From the Bruin 10. Nelson. Stopping the play, number 87, Bill Weber, the defensive end, got an arm out. No game. Second down and 10. Now Harper Howell, senior out of Boulder, Colorado, comes in to replace Frank Cephas. So apparently the Bruins will go with the one running back. Yes. Kevin Nelson. Two tight ends, two wide receivers, second and 10. Good protection. Sherrard with a beautiful catch. Now I said it was second and 10, it was second and 20. That dead ball foul against the Bruins, they marked it down at the 29 yard line. So now it is third and one. And Tunnell will check in at fullback. The freshman out of West Covina, number 23. Bit of a gamble here by UCLA, but they've got to go for it. And Sherrard finds the seam, then gets nailed. But it's close to the first down. It's third and about a half yard. No wide receivers. Powell will probably go in motion the tight end. He has been. No, he doesn't. Oh, New Eyes will keep it. Pass intended for Powell on third and one. But New Heisel was off target for one of the few times today. Yeah, he had Howell open and just threw behind him. And now they'll have to kick it away, so we'll see Steve Bono for the second time today, the second time in his UCLA career. And Irving Pryor will be joined by Jeff Smith as the return men for Nebraska. UCLA has not been a, done a good job on covering kicks this year, and a very poor kick by Bono. And into the wind, that almost hit a Nebraska player. It almost hit Brett Clark in the back, but now a UCLA roll down to the Nebraska 31-yard line. With 5.56 left to play in the first half, the score is UCLA 10, Nebraska 7. Cornhuskers from their own 31-yard line. Rozier. Oh, he and Donnie Rogers had a one-on-one -on -one collision at the 38-yard line, and Rozier has another big game. 
One All-American against another. Pretty good hole opened up by Steinkuhler on the right side, number 71, and Rozier just picking his way. Missed tackle by Chafin. Finally, nose-to-nose, -nose, Rogers and Rozier, and he picks up, what, eight yards. Tony Phillips checks in at linebacker now, number 49 for the Bruins. Second down and two for a first down at the 38-and-a-half of Nebraska. Gill back to pass. He's going deep for Irving Fryer. Dragged down at the five-yard line. Well, there's that big play offense, and once again, we tell you about the arm of Gill. He has a very underrated arm, and he hits Fryer on the run. A perfect pass, and if it weren't for Ronnie Pitts, they'd have six more points. Right by the seat of his pants, he's down at the five. Here's another angle. Good protection. Gill just lets it fly. He's throwing with the wind, by the way. And the tackle by Pitts, and they're at the five. First and goal. Rozier. Touchdown. So after being down 10 to nothing, the Cornhuskers have surged to a 13 to 10 lead with 5.01 to play in the first half. Can't beat speed. Newborn can't get him outside, and Fryer just gets in at the flag, and they're on top. Dave Schneider will try for the extra point. Right on target. So with 5.01 to play in the first half, the scoreboard changes here at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. It reads, number one ranked Cornhuskers, 14, UCLA, 10. Members of the UCLA classes of 1928, 1933, 38, 43, 48, 53, 58, 63, 68, and 73, and the Pioneer alumni from the Vermont campus are invited to take part in UCLA's Reunion Day. For any information, contact Debbie Raymond, R-E-H-M-A-N, at area code 213-825-3901. Scott Livingston will kick off number 48 and he'll have the benefit of a following win Durrell and Nelson deep to receive here we go this is one of the linebackers that's Gene Newburn with the football what was it number 81 it was 91, Greg Bolin. 91, the tight end, Greg Bolin. Freshman tight end. I think what we've undergone the last couple of moments, Ray, is a shift in momentum, as they say. As it turned out now, the third and one pass intended for Howell was a very key play. Oh, boy, wasn't it? It was uh, incomplete, and as a result, the ball had to be turned over to Nebraska, and it turned out to be devastating from a Bruin point of view. count by Neuheisel. Nelson gets to the 29-yard line for two very hard-fought live yards. Well, UCLA's got to come back now and put some kind of points on the board. They trail by four right now. We have four minutes and 38 seconds left to go in the half. If they can sustain a drive and keep it for three and a half minutes or so and then score, I think the momentum will shift back the other way. Young and Sherrard are the wide receivers. Second down, eight. This is Sherrard. A first down and a lot more out to the 44-yard line. Mike Sherrard, a fine, fine receiver. He's got probably the biggest hands for a young receiver I've ever seen, so he can catch a lot of footballs. And watch this move here. Double coverage by number 86, and Dave Ritter made the difference there. Now Durrell and Sherrard go out to the left. I'm sure you will notice from time to time the cornerbacks for Nebraska play very loose, very soft. Cephas. Down goes the official out of bounds as Cephas gets only about a yard. He couldn't, couldn't quite get away. Dave Burke was over there to make the play. Dave Ritter, the defensive end, was over to make the play. A little bit of misdirection here. The fake to... 
Nelson going to the left and the handoff to Cephas going to the right, but they didn't fool the Cornhuskers as Dave Ritter stayed at home, number 86, and made a nice play. Second down nine, just beyond the UCLA 45-yard line, 4-14 left in the half. Nebraska leading 14 to 10. Turner Gill who tripped in the way pulling out. Now it's Neuheisel who tripped back to the 42 yard line and it will bring up a third down and 12. And from the sidelines Carl Durrell the San Diego sophomore brings in the play. He'll replace Mike Young. Durrell goes out to the left working against Neil Harris. Sherrard to the right working against Dave Burke. Third and 12. Good protection. Durrell couldn't quite hold on, and it'll be. There goes a the flag. Holding is called, I think, against the defensive team, the Cornhuskers. Look like it. Watch uh, number two as you see the backers drop off as well, expecting a pass play here all the way. Everybody knew a pass was coming. Durrell almost, almost makes a one handed grab, but McCashlin is already on his back while the ball is in the air. Can't do that. Here's a better shot right here. McCashlin with contact, and it's going to be a first down for UCLA at the 44 and a half of Nebraska. With 335 left to play in the half, and Nebraska leading 14 to 10. First and 10 play coming up. Nelson. It's about three hard fought yards. Tackle there made by number 44, weak side linebacker Mike Knox, who was the hero of the Orange Bowl for Nebraska. And he was also the outstanding defensive player in the Penn State game earlier this year. Second down, seven for a first down. Sherrard off to the left, Durrell off to the right. Incomplete at the 32 yard line. Not very often will Paul Bergman drop a pass, but he dropped that one, and it's going to be third down and seven. In Paul's defense, although he will admit himself he would usually catch this ball, the ball was thrown slightly behind him. He had to turn his shoulders, and the ball hit him in the shoulder pad on his left shoulder pad, though, so he wasn't led very well by Neuheisel, but Paul will tell you he should have caught it. Mike Young comes in at wide receiver and is wide to the right on third and seven at the Nebraska 41. Well, he wanted to hit Nelson. He had him one on one with the linebacker, but it's going to be fourth down and seven. Boy, that really hurts that new Heisel is a little bit off today. He had 51. Mark Dom covering Kevin Nelson, who was not the primary receiver at all. Nelson just kind of slipped out of the backfield, came to the sideline in a crossing pattern. And if the pass had been complete, Nelson might have gotten all the way down to around the 10 or 20 yard line because Dom was behind him. Only one return man, Jeff Smith. Bono to punt. The 11-yard line of Nebraska with 2.46 to play in the half. Mike Mahan sustains an injury and has to leave the game. Second down, five for the Cornhuskers at their own 17. Rozier trying to get outside. And practically nothing on that play, maybe a yard or so. So now for Nebraska. A very important third down with the clock running and just over two minutes left in the half. Nebraska leading 14 to 10. Shaleen the pullback. Zier the eye back. Turner Gill dropped. There was a beautiful way to play that option. Yeah, don't ever let it begin. That's Frank Batchkoff, who hasn't played a whole lot this year, but he's very highly regarded by the UCLA coaches. 
and he just grabs the belt buckle and pulls him down. So don't over let that option get going. That's the best way to defend it. Stop it, nip it at the bud. So now Scott Livingston, I think this is his first punt of the game. The only time they've been turning the ball over has been by way of fumbles. He's only punted nine times all season in three games. But he's averaged almost 44 yards a punt. The clock shows 127 to play in the half. As a timeout is called by the UCLA Brewers. Um, UCLA has no timeouts remaining. Scott Livingston with the following win will be punting to Lupe Sanchez who stands at the UCLA 43 yard line. 127 to play in the half. Good pass from center. What a kick. At the 22 yard line. Fumble. Shane Swanson came up, I think, the wide receiver number 17. Here it is again. Now Livingston is punting with the wind. He has averaged almost 44 yards a punt this season. Sanchez is driven back to the 22, starts up field, and sometimes. In your anxiety to get upfield and break a tackle, look where he's carrying the football. It's just stripped away from him, and they recover. At the 32-yard line of UCLA. This is Rozier. And he fumbles. But he was ruled dead, said the official. The ball was ruled dead at about the 27 or 8-yard line of UCLA. Now the clock is running less than a minute remaining in the half. Now Nebraska has a chance to take a timeout and the Cornhuskers do. So Ray we didn't have this many fumbles at Georgia in the rain. I know it. Whether it's uh, perhaps a tribute just to the plain hard hitting. Probably. Nebraska has one timeout left. Second and five. Gill still has it. Dreyer. Went out of bounds at the 15 yard line, but he has a first down. Gill to Fryer and a first down, and he stepped out of bounds with 56 seconds left in the half. It's another Cornhusker first down. Gill is a shortstop on the baseball team here. In fact, the Yankees wanted him to play. He's a 60% thrower. And Fryer, his favorite receiver. Nice move, nice pass. You know, maybe the reason for so many fumbles, Ray, as you said, is the hard hitting. And also that last time when Sanchez was carrying the football, he had it way away from his body, didn't protect it at all. Two tight ends, one wide receiver. Was here. Out of bounds at the two-yard line. With 50 seconds left in the half. Virtually unstoppable Mike Rozier. He really is. Good blocking over there, but Rozier is really a power runner. He's 5'11, 210 pounds, the all time leading Nebraska rusher. And here's the option play. They got the quarterback covered. He goes to Rozier. He gets a block from the fullback, and he's off to the races. He runs right over Donnie Rogers, who tried to tackle him with a shoulder and just kind of leaned into him. Got to grab him. First and goal. Rozier. No, he doesn't fumble, and this will be a touchback. That cost what was almost a certain touchdown. The fumble was at the one. It was not a question of reaching the goal line. Here it is. Cut to the outside. Doug West comes across, makes the tackle, and also strips the ball away. As Donnie Rogers there to support as always. And that really saves the UCLA Bruins a very terrible feeling at halftime, providing they can hang on to the ball in the final 45 seconds. That's the fourth turnover by Nebraska. She isn't that something. Look at those stats, though. Last week, Rozier had 196 yards and three touchdowns against Minnesota. The Bruins have no timeouts remaining. They have a first and 10 at their own 20 yard line with 45 seconds left in the first half. Nelson. At the 25 yard line. Kevin Nelson. And the final seconds are ticking away. Cephas will come into the lineup. The 46. He'll replace Nelson. Clock still running. Less than 20 seconds now remaining. Cephas. Gets a couple of yards. 
four seconds, three, two, one. And that's the end of the first half. From Lincoln, Nebraska, the score. Nebraska 14, UCLA 10. Expected to take the goal at the start of the game. In other words, the following win. That's the reason right now Nebraska will receive the second half kickoff. And Ken Potter kicks. And Jeff Smith will watch this ball sail over the end line for a touchback. I'm really anxious to find out why the Bruins didn't take the football in the first half when they could have. They elected to give it to Nebraska right away. Now Nebraska gets the second half kickoff again. And UCLA is not going to get the wind in the fourth quarter. So we'll have to find out. As you can see, the Cornhuskers leading by a lot in rushing, not in passing, but certainly in first downs. They lead in total yardage, and they lead on the scoreboard by four. Turner Gill, the quarterback. Mark Shaleen, the fullback. Mike Rozier, the eye back. Scott Kimball will be wide left. A timeout was called here. They have 10 men on the field, UCLA well, Earlier, does. they had 12 and had to call a timeout in order to get things squared away and Doug West joins the lineup and uh, remains to be seen whether that's going to be it. Look at Terry. He's oh. very very upset and I'm sure a little oh. bit embarrassed playing the number one team and you have too many men on the field then not enough men on the field. And so that means that we'll keep this in the back of our mind that the Bruins have just two timeouts remaining now. Boy could that become critical. Coach Tom Osborne of Nebraska alternates with Kimball and Simmons, his wide receivers, his messengers. Right now it's Kimball wide left, Fryer wing back right. What a weapon, Irving Fryer. But here's Rozier speaking of weapons. Gang tackling by that defense. Number seven is Don Rogers, 39, Neil Delacono. The man who really made this play work is number 44, Jeff Chafin. He was being blocked by Scott Raridan, number 72. He weighs 280 pounds, that right tackle of the Cornhuskers. Chafin fought him off and got Rozier with an arm. Two yards, second down, eight. Fryer in motion. Here goes Rozier to the outside. Whoa. A collision with Ron Pitts. And close to a first down, it is a first down for Mike Rozier. Yeah, just a pitch back to Rozier, and everybody in the white shirt is trying to string the play out and make Rozier go as far to the sideline as he can, but he finds an angle, cuts up field, and runs over Ron Pitts and gets another first down. At the 31-yard line of Nebraska. 14-10, Nebraska leading. Second half just underway. Shaleen. Or is it Rathman? Yeah, Tom Rathman replaced Shaleen on that play. Rathman is a sophomore out of Grand Island, Nebraska. Kimball now gives way to Simmons as that shuttle system continues in operation. That play gained two yards, second down eight, Nebraska 33 and a half. Simmons is out to the right, one on one against Sanchez. Fryer. Breaking tackles, and West hits him out along with Pitts at the 40, where it will be third down and one. So the ground yardage continues to pile up for Nebraska, 225 yards on the ground in the first half. A yard away from a first down as Kimball sprints out to the right. Sanchez will join him defensively. Friars a wing back on the left side, the short side of the field. Rozier, first down, 44 yard line. The Bruins are so beat up at linebacker right now, Ray, that they have a freshman, number 57, Adam Hutchins from Las Vegas, Nevada, 6'2 and 225. Number 57, a freshman in there at an inside linebacker spot. So their linebacking core is so tattered at the moment that keep an eye on 57. They may run at him the rest of the afternoon. It's going to be a test for that youngster. It's another first down. Rozier, look at that hole. Whoa. He's out to the 49-yard line. The way Rozier's running, I don't know how he can avoid gaining 200 yards. Oh, he had 106 at the half, and he's off to the races already in the second half. And again, we point to the Bruin 
linebacking core. Mewborn now calling signals. Jeff Knowles hasn't been in there a lot. Ron Butler cannot play. Steve Jarecki is out. So they're really going with the backup people, second, third team people. Here goes Rozier. Slipped one tackle, but he's brought down short of a first down. It'll be third and three for Nebraska. For those of you who did not see the start of the game, the Bruins got off to a 7 0 lead, increased it to 10 0, taking advantage of Nebraska turnovers. Then back came the Cornhuskers. It was 10 7. Then Nebraska took the lead, and apparently we're going to score another touchdown. But Rozier hit at the one yard line, fumbled through the end zone for a touchback. Hence, 14 to 10, Nebraska. Gill still has the ball. Fryer can't hold on, or that would have gone a long way, and it's fourth down. Excellent faking by Turner Gill. The handoff to the running back inside, and he had all the linebackers and all the defensive line centering on that ball carrier, or the one they thought had the football. He pulled it back out, and Fryer just couldn't hang on. That's only the second pass that Gill has not completed, and it was right on target. Yes, it was. Scott Livingston to punt, Lupe Sanchez to return, back around the 10-yard line. Second half is only about three minutes old. Into the win. Into the end zone. So, whereas Nebraska started at the 20-yard line after the opening kickoff of the second half, so will UCLA with a score 14 to 10 in favor of Nebraska. Puts the fullback. Fake to Nelson. Oh, Sherrard wide open, but Neuheisel couldn't quite get the ball to him. Some pressure was being applied by Mike Keeler, the defensive tackle for Nebraska. So it will be second down and 10. Not very good numbers for Neuheisel, not in comparison to what he did the first two games. He's a 59% thrower, but he's not anywhere near that today. He's missed throwing the ball about four times to open receivers. Second down and 10. Three-man rush. Cephas, 30, 35, 40. Whoa, is he bowling over people. He's all the way out, almost to midfield. He just ran over that cornerback, Neil Harris, and got about another six or seven yards. You don't mess with Frank Cephas. He is 5'10", 205 pounds. That's a gain of 16 pounds from last year. He used to be a tailback in high school, so he can run. He put on the extra weight, and this is what he does to Neil Harris. He runs right over number 11. Good play all the way. And a first down at the UCLA 49. Mike Young is out to the right, working against Dave Burke. Sherrard to the left. New Heisel. He gets about three yards as he elects not to risk an interception. It'll be second down seven as he's tackled by nose tackle Mike Tranmer. Very wise choice by Neuheisel. So he had Bergman in a seam, but then he saw a couple of red shirts closing in on his tight end, kept the football, and most importantly, while he was being tackled, he grabbed it with both arms so he wouldn't fumble. Now, we have somebody down along the near sidelines, right in front of the UCLA bench, Joe. I... And that's the reason we have an official timeout right now with 11-18 to play in the third quarter. Paul Bergman shaken up. Harper Howell replaces him at tight end. Second down seven. Here comes the pressure. A lateral. That's a lateral. That ball's alive. It can be recovered. Nebraska has it. Neuheisel threw the ball backwards. He did, and he's going to go to the referee now and complain about it, but watch here. He gets tremendous pressure from a couple of blitzing Cornhuskers and throws the ball backwards. He was facing. He did an about face and let go of the ball backwards. Tanell couldn't get it. Nebraska did, and despite the protestations of Neuheisel, it's going to be Cornhusker ball at the UCLA 33. So first down and 10. Jeff Smith is the deep back in the eye. Shaleen is the fullback. Gill still has it, fakes, oh, what a beautiful fake. And gets about six or seven yards to the 26-yard line before Don Rogers makes the tackle. But the second turnover by UCLA. Now watch the faking by Gill. He's got 57 right there. The freshman, Adam Hutchins, 
Trying to make the stop, couldn't do it. Good fake on Don West. Picked up good yardage. Second down, three and a half. Jeff Smith, first down inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. You know, Ray, we haven't seen a lot of option football from Nebraska today. They usually, that's their bread and butter. But with plays like we just saw, there's no reason to run the option when you're just beating up the guys up the middle. So Nebraska is leading 14 to 10 and on the move with the first and 10 at the UCLA 19 yard line. Fryer is wide to the right. There goes the fullback, Shaleen, dragged down by Kenny Page around the 15 yard line. But Shaleen gets five yards on first down or thereabouts. Ricky Simmons brings in instructions from the sidelines. We're early third quarter, 9.50 left in the period. Simmons goes left, working against Pitts. Fryer comes out to the right. He'll draw the attention of Lupe Sanchez. Smith. He has a first down inside the 10 at the eight and a half yard line. That's some kind of running by Smith, a 5'9 junior. He broke three tackles on his way to the sideline, and then was still able to cut up field. Here it is. The handoff, nothing inside, so he goes outside. There's one, two, and three, and then Donnie Rogers comes up and finally gets him out of bounds. But it's first and goal, the Cornhuskers, at the eight and a half of UCLA. Gill still has it. And he's down to the one-yard line. Turner Gill has carried for over, over 50 yards. Second and goal. Short yardage defensive players come in for UCLA. Gill, 11 for 65 yards. Second and goal at the UCLA one. Shaleen, no. Oh, he, he, left, he left his feet a little bit too soon. It'll be third and goal. And in comes Rozier. Tom Osborne trying to win his 100th collegiate game. The first game he ever won as a head coach was against UCLA. It is third and goal after a loss of one at the UCLA two-yard line. Keep your eye on number 30, Mike Rozier. There goes Rozier to the outside. He's going to reverse his field. He has a blocker. Here's Donnie Rogers. He got away from Rogers. What a run! Look at all the Bruins lying on the ground. He left a trail of white shirts. And I tell you what, Mike Rozier deserved that touchdown. There's no way he should have broken that tackle. Just kind of outmuscled Ron Pitts, reversed his field. He beats a man here. Lupe Sanchez is being blocked as Gill leads him around. Donnie Rogers, of all people, misses the tackle. Don West dives, doesn't get him. Mike Rozier deserves that touchdown. And he left four or five, maybe six Bruins lying on the ground. Here's another angle. Ron Pitts had him dead to rights, just fought him off. And now he's off to the races. To call that a two-yard run is absolutely unfair. If anybody ever deserved a touchdown, it's Mike Rozier. That was all Mike Rozier. So it is 20 to 10 with 8.16 to play in the third quarter. Gill will hold for Dave Schneider. Crowd still just bubbling and buzzing over that truly great effort by Mike Rozier. So point number 21 is on the board. The score 21 to 10 in favor of Nebraska. So on the brilliant run by Mike Rozier, Nebraska now has scored 21 unanswered points after falling behind 10-0. Scott Livingston will kick. Nelson and Durrell deep. But this is the short man with the football, Harper Howell. And a pretty good run back out to the 33-yard line where Dave Ritter will make the tackle. 
Now let's see if that turnover and the follow-up touchdown by Nebraska has in any way deflated the offensive unit here of the Bruins. Well, they got off to such a good start when they got the ball for the first time in the second half, and then that critical turnover on the lateral by Neuheisel, and it resulted in a score. Fake to Nelson. Sherrard. Mike Sherrard has a first down across the 50 at the 47 yard line. That was Neil Harris defending. You know, Sherrard's been open a lot today, Ray. Yes, he has. They may find him going more one on one with Harris because they set up in a one on one. The cornerbacks play very soft here at Nebraska. Sherrard has been open many times. A couple of times, New Heisel just didn't throw it to him. Darrell wide right, the wide side of the field. Sherrard to the near side. Nelson trying to get outside. And gets about three yards. Written down by, among others, Mike Keeler, number 61, getting untangled. Next week at the Rose Bowl, the Cougars of BYU and the football will be in the air with their quarterback Steve Young throwing. Gerard Durrell to the left, Young to the right, no tight end. Every receiver was covered, and Mike Tranmer drops New Hazel for a big loss back at the UCLA 48-yard line. Ray, that's one walk-on tackling another. Near 64, the middle guard, Mike Tranmer, was a walk-on here. He's a 50-year senior. Neuheisel in the same boat. He walked on at UCLA. He's a 50-year senior. Today, by the way, happens to be Mike Tranmer Day, I understand. The people yes. from Lyons, Nebraska, are here and saluting that middle guard. And from the farm to fame, he went. Third down and 15. Seven minutes to play third quarter as Neuheisel is going for Sherrard and it might be picked off and it is. Dave Burke. He was double teaming on Sherrard and that's the third UCLA turnover. Here it is. The Bruins gambling a little bit but there's a flag on this play so hold everything. Pass going toward the outside and look at all those red shirts. Let's see what we have. So it was a false start, which meant that the whistle blew before the pass was thrown, and here's a break for UCLA. Big break. Dead, dead ball penalty. Nebraska has no option. UCLA in violation before the snap of the ball. Third down. 20. 6.38 to play third quarter. Nebraska having regained the momentum, leading 21 to 10. Sherrard will go to the right. Burton, the tight end, is on the right side. Excellent defense. Rob Stuckey brings down Neuheisel, who could find no one open, and it's punt formation time. Stuckey beat number 74, Steve Gemza, who has just inserted this play at left tackle. He just fought off the block of Gemza, who weighs 280, and caught Neuheisel from the blind side. So good play by 75, Rob Stuckey. So it's punt formation time. And Bono gets off a very high punt. Jeff Smith fields it at his own 15. You can't arm tackle any of these Nebraska running backs. So with the score, 21 to 10 in favor of Nebraska. At the 28-yard line of Nebraska, Jeff Smith is the tailback, and he has the football. And he squeezes out an extra yard or so to the 31-yard line. And on the bottom of the pile, number 81, Gene Newborn, the senior out of Lexington, Massachusetts. Gain of three for Jeff Smith, second down seven, Cornhusker 31-yard line. 
Fryer is way out to the left. Ricky Simmons to the near side. There's Fryer all alone. Uh, Pitts makes the tackle, but not before another Nebraska first down. And the Cornhuskers are piling up tremendous yardage, 312 yards for their offense in the first half. Well, they lead the NCAA in yards rushing and total offense. And right now, with the momentum and with an 11 point lead, why they feel they can play with UCLA, and that's exactly what they're doing. Scott Kimball is off to the right. Quick count. There's Jeff Smith to the outside. Look out. Rodgers finally gets him, but another first down. This is the Bruin 41-yard line. The offensive line of Nebraska is so good at sealing off the defense. There's absolutely no one outside. As West gets sealed off, there's nobody out there to defend. And once you get into the defensive backfield, why, these fellas can pick up five, six, seven yards on their own. First and ten, the Cornhuskers. Here comes Fryer. Here comes Jeff Smith. Short yardage this time. Nice play by number 57, Adam Hutchins. Adam Hutchins doesn't even show on our roster. That's He's not. The, that's the really the desperate situation that UCLA is in. And as far as our linebackers are concerned, they're really hurting. Second down and nine. Shane Swanson wide left. Scott Kimball wide right. Fake to Smith. Yells the keeper. And he gets close to a first down around the 31 yard line before the ever present Gene Newburn is there to pin him down. With help from Lee Knowles. Watch the block by number 28. Right here on Doug West. Boom. And that just frees Gill to do what he wants, be creative if he can, and Mewborn there to make the stop. Mewborn is a backup to Tommy Taylor, who is an inside right linebacker, but Taylor not able to play because of an ankle sprain. He's not even in uniform. Third and less than a yard for a first down. Less than four minutes to play in the third quarter. Jeff Smith is the first down to the 26 yard line. And there's no doubt about it now, this Nebraska offensive line has really taken charge of the line of scrimmage. I think the Bruins are a little bit deflated. They're certainly banged up and injured. They have people in there who haven't played much football at the college level at all, who are doing a, a, a fair job, but they're playing one of the, they're playing the top team in the country, let's face it. First and 10, the UCLA 26. Here comes the option. Gill keeps this time. And now it looks like he didn't get very much, and then you suddenly look up and say, what, he got six yards. Turner Gill, by the way, is getting to the point now where you can think of a 100-yard game running for the quarterback. Second down, four. Simmons out wide to the left. Gill's averaging over six yards a carry. Shaleen, first down, 12-yard line. Jeff Chapin has been getting a little bit of a breather, and he's coming back into the lineup now, number 44, the defensive lineman on the left side. But it's yet another first down for Nebraska. Now their offensive line is starting to blow the Bruins off the football like the Bruin offensive line was doing to Nebraska in the second quarter when they had the momentum. Well, that's all changed now. Raffman is now the fullback. This is Jeff Smith. Picks a bit of a hole to the nine-yard line where it will be second down, seven. Here's Dean Steincooler, All-America candidate. In fact, he may be up for the Lombardi Trophy and the Outland Trophy. Sustaining his block. Something Steincooler said this week really makes sense. He said the skilled people in the backfield are so good, so quick, that we as offensive linemen don't have to sustain our blocks very long because they run through the hole. Gill looking to the end zone. Touchdown. Tom Rathman, the fullback. So the Cornhuskers have now scored 27 unanswered points. 
There isn't a Bruin around Gill. There isn't a Bruin around this front fella. Donnie Rogers trailing the play all the way. And Nebraska, what's the word, in command? And about to up their lead to 18 as Schneider's kick is good. I've been looking along the sidelines with uh, Nebraska leading by that 18-point margin, Joe, and I think... All star. Sidelines with uh, Nebraska leading by that 18-point margin, Joe, and I think I spotted Steve Bono with his helmet on and Rick Neuheisel with his helmet off. So conceivably, the Norristown, Pennsylvania junior, Steve Bono, will get an opportunity to see what he can do. One forty-six left to play, third quarter. Into the wind, Kevin Nelson. Hit down at the 22-yard line with great authority. UCLA's nationally ranked women's volleyball team has two big matches upcoming. Next Tuesday against California State Long Beach and then on October 12th against Southern California. Tickets for both Pauley Pavilion matches are on sale right now at the UCLA Central Ticket Office. Steve Bono, the quarterback. First and 10 from the UCLA 22-yard line. Cephas went in motion. Quarterback draw. And Bono gets about three yards. Steve, of course, is a big, strong 6'4", 210. And he's a bit more mobile than Neuheisel. The only rap on Neuheisel today was he hasn't been able to hit some receivers who have been open. Look at that difference there. Nebraska 329 on the ground, the Bruins 64. Second down, six at the 26 of UCLA. Bono still has the ball. Sherrard with a fine catch on a first down at the 39-yard line. Again, taking advantage of Neil Harris playing well off the receivers. Now watch the quick release by Bono, who is a catcher on the UCLA baseball team. Just pegged that ball down to second base right there, and he's on target. Sherrard runs a nice pattern, a curl to the outside, comes back for the football. The tackle made by Harris, and the Bruins have a first down. First and ten, the Bruins at their own 39-yard line. Seconds only remaining in the third quarter. Bono. And he has another first down as he runs for 11 yards. And a smart play by Bono. He took what the defense gave him that time. The middle opened up. There were no rushers inside. All the rushers came from the outside. The backers dropped off. The cornerbacks were covering the receiver. So Steve took what they gave him, ran for 11 yards in the first down. Terrell checks in. David Clinton checks in. Two new wide receivers. The clock is continuing to run with now only 18 seconds left in the third quarter. Nelson goes in motion. Here comes Bono. This time he gets. Oh, about two yards. And that's the final play of the third quarter. From Lincoln, Nebraska, the score. Nebraska 28, UCLA 10. Second down, 7, 47-yard line of Nebraska as we have 15 minutes more of playing time remaining. Steve Bono, the quarterback. This is the fullback, Tunnell, and he loses. Good play by Jim Scow, a sophomore linebacker out of Omaha. Loss of about five yards, third down, six-yard loss, third and 14. Out to the left goes Durrell, to the right, Sherrard.
Close to a first down at the 40 yard line. Durrell. See where they spot the ball. The nose of the ball appears to be right where they would have to get the first down. From this angle, it certainly looks that, that it way. is a first down. Ran right over the stick. Yes. That's on the judgment of the official, of course. And he says, first, first down, down, UCLA. So there's a very big third and 14 at the 40 yard line of Nebraska. Bono fired that ball pretty well to the outside. He, of course, had been hampered by that sore shoulder, but he threw that into authority, as he did the earlier one to uh, Mike Sherrard. Cephas will now check in at fullback. Mike Young will be the one wide receiver coming to the near side. Sherrard plays the short side off to the left. First and ten play. Well, let's see if that's a real play or not. Bono may have called for the snap when he saw that defensive lineman making his charge. Exactly. If that's the way they call it. There's a flag on the play. Here it is again. There's the nose guard coming in and the ball is snapped. Centers are usually coached to do that without the call of the quarterback if necessary. Anytime a defensive lineman gets into that neutral zone, go ahead and snap the ball. And that'll cost him five yards. It's taken a long time to iron this one out, though. So the five yard penalty contact was made by that defensive lineman. As a result, it is first and five at the 35 yard line of Nebraska. Gerard will be working against. Mike McCashlin, the, they call him the monster back. Nelson. Well, he wound up with an extra effort, two or three yards out of that. You know, Nebraska still going with single coverage on Sherrard and Durrell, and those two young wide receivers can fly. So maybe a Bono setting something up to hit one of those fellas downfield. Oh, here would be a great spot. Second and two. Oh, yeah. 32 yard line. 28 to 10. Nebraska leading. 13 44 left in the game. Mike Young is coming out to the wide side, and Burke is really giving him a lot of room. Cephas loses about a yard, and it'll be third and three, as Mike Knox just wouldn't allow him to get outside. I don't understand what the theory is here. Give it to Cephas to the short side of the field. A lot of red shirts, not very many white blockers over there. I think that there may have been a missed assignment because no one blocked Knox or even came close to him. Nobody touched him. He got to block the linebackers. Third and three. 33 yard line of Nebraska. UCLA's total offense approaching 200 yards. goes Bono in the grasp of Doug Herman a reserve tackle out of Custer South Dakota and whereas a moment ago it was second and two all of a sudden it's fourth and five fourth and seven well now when Bono wants to go to Sherrard they finally double cover him with a cornerback and a safety so obviously he can't throw the ball and he's put down in fine fashion by Doug Herman number 63 275 pound defensive lineman and Terry Donahue and staff decide that they're in four down territory. This is a fourth and seven. Fourth and seven. Oh, a drop by Bergman wide open at the 22 yard line. I wouldn't bet on that ever that he would drop a pass oh. in his hands in the open field. Here it is again. Bergman tight end held for a count. Went out into the pattern. Look at the pass. A little bit behind him. So in Paul's defense, the pass was not very well thrown, but well enough, and Paul will say he should have caught it. So it is a first down for the Cornhuskers at their own 32-yard line. Leading by 18. And here comes Rozier. Look out. He's 
It's uh, four yards on first down. What's his total now? What's uh, that unofficial total for uh, Rozier? With that, it's about 133 yards now and 23 carries. That's the most carries he's had in the game this year, by the way. Second down and six. And I'll tell you, his one touchdown run, only two yards is all the official statistics will say, but it was a gem. It was a keeper. Second down, six. Goes here in motion. Here's Shane Swanson, the wingback, making tackles. It's down. Looked like he was going to be brought down for a loss by, of all people, Neil Delacono, but he spun away from him. Misdirection play here, coming back the other side. Swanson with the ball. Delacono misses a tackle. Boy, I tell you what, UCLA, their defense in the first quarter, about as good as you can play, and since that time, they've really gone downhill. Of course, defense been on the field a long time today. First down at the Nebraska 49. Gill still has it. He winds up with about four yards before Don Rogers, among others, makes the tackle. Gene Newborn. Second down and six at the UCLA 47 yard line. Next week at the Rose Bowl. Hope you'll join us on television. BYU, the Cougars. Here comes the option. There goes Rozier running over people, hurdling people. First down, 31 yard line. You saw Rozier pick up Don Rogers. They are acquaintances. They posed together for numerous All-America pitchers before the season, during the summer, for all the different magazines. Watch him now just leap over the blocker. He's missed by Hutchins. Finally, Don Rogers comes over and upends his good friend, and then he gets picked up. So the result, another first down. This one at the UCLA 31-yard line. First down, Gill with a lot of time. This is Rozier breaking another tackle. Gee, many Christmas. That's uncanny. I know it. Mark Whalen had him dead to rights. I would have blown the whistle, and he broke the tackle. Oh, my goodness. Let's just watch it here. Good blocking again. It sounds like we're repeating ourselves time and time again. Gill calmly makes the pass. Here's the play. Mark Whalen with a tackle. He had him twice at the shoulders and then the ankles, and somehow he broke it and kept on going. Donnie Rogers saved the day. First down at the 17-yard line. Ten minutes to play in the game. Here comes Rozier. And Pitts finally gets him out of bounds, but not before he gets it on another six yards. Rozier is just about at his average. He's averaging 152 yards rushing a game. He's almost there. Isn't that amazing? You told me two weeks ago, you say, where do you say this Mike Rozier? I'm telling you, I saw him all last year, so <laughs> forgive me for not being too surprised. I mean, he's just, he's an amazing back. He's not only strong and quick and fast, but so determined. On his way to the Heisman, maybe. Second down and four. There goes Rathman to the eight, where it'll be third down and about a yard and a half. You get the feeling there that Turner Gill just gave the Bruin defense a breather. He says, all right, we've used Rozier now three times in a row. Let's go to somebody else. And he picked up two yards. Third down. Jeff Smith replaces Rozier. That's the reason for that applause before Rozier headed for the sidelines. And now number 28, Jeff Smith, will be the eye back. Tom Rathman, number 26, is the fullback. Gill keeps pitches to Jeff Smith. This could be a touchdown. <laughs> Irving Fryer threw the big block. And Smith ran inside that block. And now Nebraska has scored 34 unanswered points. Watch it here. Watch Fryer. We know he can run. He can catch. Now you know he can block. He blocked one of the Pac-10's best quarterbacks, Lupe Sanchez. And here it is from a different angle. Option, pitch back, they cover the quarterback, but they are not covering number 28, Jeff Smith. The block, he cuts in and scores. Schneider's extra point. It is good. And it's now Nebraska 34, UCLA 10. We'll be back after this. 
With that score and that much time remaining, the Bruins are about to get the football with Darrell and Nelson deep. Well, I, I hope that this is an accurate statement. No matter what follows for the Bruins this year, it can't be as tough as this. No, no way. As, as far as the offense of the other team is concerned. That's right, and I think it really sets them up for a good Pac-10 season. There's nobody in the Pac-10 with this kind of talent. Almost any back Nebraska runs today does well. And that's got to be a credit not only to the back and the coaching, but to the blocking of the offensive line. They are so precise in their assignments. Dan Wingard will be kicking off now with the following wind, I might add. Kevin Nelson will run it out. Five, ten. He gets it out to about the 19-yard line. We'd like to remind you again that the Bruins will be back home in the Rose Bowl next week against the BYU Cougars. Always pass happy. Tickets are available daily at Ticketmaster, Ticketron, the Pasadena Civic Auditorium, and the UCLA Central Ticket Office. In fact, you can dial UCLA 101 for information. Steve Bono will again be the quarterback. Cephas will be the fullback. Nelson, the deep back. Sherrard, Durrell, and Young. Three wide receivers, no tight end. Intercepted. This is Burke, David Burke. Touchdown for Burke. There's Bono. He had Mike Sherrard wide open on a play action pass. And just didn't throw it well enough. Burke comes up with his first interception of the year. And the second time the Cornhuskers have run back an interception for a touchdown. Mike Knox had the other TD after picking off a pass. So all of a sudden, the score has mounted. 41 to 10 after that 31 yard return by the former eye back now cornerback Dave Burke. So even a low snap from center is turned into a successful extra point. The score now Nebraska total offense Nebraska 479 yards versus UCLA's 194 and at halftime UCLA was very much in the game trailing only 14 to 10 but 28 points in the second half by Nebraska and the Bruins have yet to score in the second half Wingard kicks Kevin Nelson will run it out out to the 33 yard line excellent run back by Kevin Nelson I'm sure we'll see a host of substitutes now for Nebraska. Let's see if we or will we. Tom, Tom Osborne. Osborne. Yeah, he's on his way to winning maybe game 100. Oh, I think it means a lot. Yeah, Tom, I, I've got to disagree with you a little bit. <laughs> I think the kids love to be number one, and they're showing it now. Kevin Nelson, 37-yard line. I thought, frankly, that I would see a number of defensive substitutes in the game, but I see Greg Reeves. I don't believe he's played before today, number 84, a defensive end from, here's a great name for a town, Wahoo, Nebraska. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Sounds like a, a linebacker should come from Wahoo, Nebraska, though, not a defensive end. At any rate, he is the only substitute. This, other than that, it's the first uh, defensive unit in there for Nebraska. This is a second and seven play. Bono being chased by Stuckey, the big tackle. Whoa, is he collared by linebacker Mike Knox. Bono close to a first down at the 42-yard line. He'll be about a yard shy. I believe, let's see, UCLA turned the two turnovers into scores. Yeah, fumble, I mean the lateral and the interception. 
And then they turned a couple of fumbles into scores of their own. Eight minutes left. It's a third and one. And a first down run. It's Reeves, number 84, who just came into the game, tackling Cephas after he makes the first down. Now, Tony Holloway, sophomore linebacker from Bellevue, Nebraska, number 43. He was in the game, but uh, only for one play. They've got their original defensive backfield in there as well. Yes, Todd Proffitt, the reserve linebacker, is in, number 34. He still gets his pass away. Does Bono to the 49-yard line of Nebraska to Mike Sherrard, who, in a losing effort, is having another fine day. Mike Sherrard. Number 96, Jim Scow, comes up from the blind side or behind. And watch him nail Bono, and somehow he gets the ball off on target. And Sherrard does a nice job with it. Gain five yards, second and five, Nebraska 49, clock running, and seven minutes to play. This is Cephas. Clark finally gets him, but only after Cephas has a first down at the 38-yard line of Nebraska. Frank playing a guessing game with number 10, Brett Clark. He breaks into the open. Some fine blocking here. The offensive line blocks down. The pulling tackle makes a nice block to the outside. Now he guesses that number 10 is going to go inside with him. Instead, he stays outside, and they run together. A lot of people say, why would he run right at the safety. Well, because they're playing a guessing game out there, wondering which way he's going to cut. Frank thought he'd go the other way. He was wrong, but he picked up a nice yard. And the first down at the 38-yard line of Nebraska. A fake reverse. And that play wound up gaining exactly one yard. With Nelson getting the yard. Nelson has now carried 17 times for 51 yards. He's gone all day at tailback because the Bruins' leading tailback, Danny Andrews, not able to play this afternoon because of an injury sustained against Arizona State. So Nelson pretty tired. You see him there. Ricky Green and Gary Schneider, two new defensive backs, are in now for Nebraska. Ken Graber is in at nose tackle for Nebraska. With a back draw for Bono. And he's down to the 30 yard line for a pickup of eight. The clock continues to run. Five minutes and 35 seconds remaining in a game that has taken a total turn here in the second half. It was 14 to 10 Nebraska at halftime. The Bruins, since leading 10 to nothing, have been kept off the scoreboard, and the Huskers have put 42 points on the board. Todd Fisher, a sophomore defensive back from Omaha. Number six is playing the left corner. And Ricky Green, a junior from Seminole, Texas, playing the, the right cornerback. Powell in motion. Fake pitch. They wanted to hit Harper Howell down the sideline, inside the 10, but we have a flag down near the line of scrimmage. Usually, if it's behind the line, you can bet it's going to be a holding penalty, and that's what Steve Bono signals to the sidelines there. Yep, there it is. It was third and two. It was second and two. Doug Herman, senior reserve tackle from Custer, South Dakota, elects to take the penalty. Third down. Twelve yards for a first down as Terry Donahue ponders the situation. I think he knows now. Okay. This is third and twelve. 
Good reception from Mike Young, who made that big touchdown grab and broke a couple of tackles for the TD against Arizona State last week. So that's a first down at the 14-yard line. Very nice pass by Bono, who can fling the ball well. He's a big, strong kid, but a good concentration by Young, who has to follow the ball as it comes between a couple of defenders. Darrell checks in. It'll be a first down for the Bruins at the 14-yard line of Nebraska. Sherrard to the left, Darrell off to the right. Working against cornerback Todd Fisher. Fumble! And re it is recovered by Nebraska's Todd Prophet, a reserve linebacker from Hartford, Connecticut. So the Bruins turn it over again. This should really about do it. Chief is carrying that ball on his hip. He knew he was losing the ball as he was running, and Prophet just plucked it right out of the air. The score is 42 to 10 in favor of Nebraska, and we'll be back right after. Nate Mason is a new quarterback. Paul Miles is a new running back, a sophomore out of Princeton, New Jersey, number 21. Nate Mason is a senior out of Greenville, Texas, who has been playing in the shadow of Turner Gill these last couple of years. What a big shadow. I mean, wow. how can you beat out a Turner Gill? He's finally going to give it up, graduate, but then he's going to play baseball, I understand. He's not going to go pro football. Jim Thompson, a new wide receiver out to the left. So we have a whole host of substitutes in the game now. Well, Gill isn't the only running quarterback. He's cornered by Joe Gasser, close to a first down around the 19-yard line of the Cornhuskers with four minutes and a couple of seconds left to be played. Well, I would have to believe, Joe, at this stage that our viewers who have only heard about Nebraska and have not seen the Cornhuskers might be uh, true believers now that this is uh, truly one of the great football teams uh, of the last few years, not just this year. Well, the 1971 team under Bob Devaney with 13 and 0 and the Orange Bowl champions that year was voted as the best football team ever by the Sporting News. And now many people, including Devaney, thinks this may be better than that 71 team. Bob Devaney, of course, is now the athletic director here at the University of Nebraska. I was surprised to see the Sporting News put Texas number one this week. I think that'll change. Nebraska trying for its 14th consecutive win. That's the longest winning streak amongst NCAA schools. Mason faked to his fullback. Pitches to Miles. Look at him go. All the way out to the Nebraska 44-yard line. Well, this is the backup quarterback. Watch how well he runs the option. On his way down, he pitches the ball out. And it's up to Josh Shinnick and Lyndon Crawford to finally make the stop. Josh Shinnick now playing at the safety spot. First down, Nebraska, after that fine run by Miles, out to the Nebraska 44. Here goes Miles again. He gallops as much as he runs. At this time, a thank you from all of us to the staffs of these two fine universities. We always need help and granted so very well by the University of Nebraska's athletic director, Bob Devaney, Tom Osborne, the head coach, Don Bryant, the sports information director, the man they call the Gray Fox. Second down and inches for a first down at the 46 of UCLA. This is Tim Brungart, the third fullback we've seen today, picking up the first down. And to UCLA's athletic director, Peter Dallas, the head football coach, Terry Donahue, and his staff, sports information director, Gary Rausch, and Mark Dellens, the assistant sports information director, thanks to all of you for making our task so enjoyable. Nebraska continuing to pile up just awesome yardage. Brungart gets it to the 35. Tim Brungart, the senior fullback now, is 
out of Norfolk, Nebraska. Oh, was that Scott Porter that time? Well, they ran a they ran a fourth fullback in on us, Scott Porter. We have an injury. Be sure to join us on most of these stations next week. The Bruins come back to the Rose Bowl. We'll host the Cougars of Brigham Young University. Stay with us all season long. Metro Sports will bring you all of the pageantry, the excitement of UCLA football. Mark Whalen has to be aided off the field after sustaining a knee injury. Second and six for Nebraska at the UCLA 35 yard line. Here's Miles hurdling. Boy, oh boy, you can say to yourself, well, if you're an opponent, all right, well, Mike Rozier will be gone. Well, then you say, well, then there's Jeff Smith and there's Paul Miles. Nebraska is never given credit for good recruiting. In other words, they're never finished among the top 10 recruiters every year. But boy, they, when they get here, they do something with these kids. Put them on weights, number one. They have an extensive weight program here and a beautiful facility for that. And when these kids get here, they really become much better football players. First down at the 21 yard line. Here's Miles. And this time. This time the tackle is made by Jeff Chafin, the defensive left end. The executive producer of UCLA football is Leonard Klompas. Today's game been produced by Skip Desjardin, directed by Hal Bassett, our coordinating producer Marcia Turner, our associate producer Paul Carlson. Production facilities have been supplied by Cruise Unlimited, Crestwood, Kentucky, and Rocky Mountain Productions of St. Louis, Missouri. The pitch goes to Miles. Uh, young running back gets it to the 17 yard line. As we remind you that this game has been produced in association with KTLA Channel 5 Los Angeles Golden West Television Incorporated. I think the Bruin defense right now if they have a challenge left is to not allow Nebraska to score in the final two minutes and five seconds of this ball game. It's third down about six to go right now and the Bruins trailing by 32. So their new challenge now is just stop them right here. Tony Pankoff the freshman nose tackle out of Long Beach is in the game now for UCLA. Whoop, we have a new quarterback. This is Craig Sunberg. And he has dropped down behind the line. So we have seen three quarterbacks, three eye backs, four fullbacks, and they just keep coming in waves. It's now fourth down and nine at the 20 yard line of UCLA. The clock shows a minute and a half left to play in the game. Jim Thompson is wide to the left. There goes Miles. He does not get the first down. I don't know. Wait, maybe he did. They gave him. He's not down at the 11, they say. They say he's down at the inches short of the 10. And if so, that, should that be appears it. to be enough for a first down. It is. First and 10 Nebraska. Miles, lots of moves, carrying a ball a little loosely. Yes, we've seen plenty of fumbles oh, yeah. today. All right, wide to the right, another new player, Rod Yates, a new wide receiver. Fullback is Brungart. There goes Miles. He's down to the one yard line. Took an official with him. And a defender, Josh Shinnick. Here it is again. Just simple power football right up the middle. Look at the hole. My goodness. Newborn misses him. Shinnick grabs on. And finally, it's Ron Pitts and Shinnick who bring him down at about the one yard line. The nose of the football tickling the one yard line. Anthony Thomas is a new offensive lineman in from San Francisco. Miles, by the way, is carried for 74 yards. That young man right there. In only eight carries. Oh. Second. Ten seconds left. And the crowd does not like the fact the quarterback Craig Sunberg apparently under orders oh, took the snap and just fell down. Definitely and under orders. This game is over. The final score. Nebraska's Cornhuskers. 42. 
the UCLA Bruins, 10. We'll be back. Yeah, I am too. Now we have to look forward with the Bruins to BYU next week at the Rose Bowl. Number one, though, is getting some people healthy. The Bruins took a terrible toll today on injuries. They've got to get something going, whereas today they faced a very powerful running team. Next week they have to prepare for a team that throws the football. But number one, you got to get some people better. Their linebacking core is just about depleted because of injuries. So a very awesome Nebraska offense overpowers UCLA. And along with Joe Butita, I'm Ray Scott saying thank you and so long from Lincoln, Nebraska. Once again, our final score, Nebraska 42, UCLA 10.